the coup now begins to look more and more like a straightforward military revolt against corruption in government, and one that's likely to last. It has popular backing. What's not so clear is who its real backers are. The man at present being put forward is the army commander, General Agui Ironzi, who arrived at the heavily guarded parliament buildings to hold the new administration's first press conference. The federal military government in Nigeria has taken over the administration of the country. The functions of the federal military government will be exercised by the Supreme Military Council and leaders of which will be announced later. Permanent secretaries in charge of federal ministries will continue in their office carrying out the normal functions of government and they shall be directly responsible to the federal military government when constituted. We will have the press censorship during this regime. I do not think that I should start off with press censorship. But I may impose censorship if it became necessary. Don't see you, Daily Mail of London. Will there be any change in the external policy of your government? No. Television News of London. May I ask the General whether he regards his administration as a permanent or a caretaker administration? My main concern is to restore law and order as soon as possible. As early as Sunday, the day after the coup, people pursued their ordinary diversions as if they still lived under one of the most stable governments in Africa. No one seemed distressed or puzzled. Perhaps they were right not to be. Perhaps it's all very simple. In Lagos, from all one gathers, the coup is cheerfully accepted, and the Sardona and the Quintala are unlamented. Even Balewa's departure from office is likely to be more wept in London than in Lagos.